The Messenger of Allah says in paradise, in Jannah, there is a marketplace to which the people will come every Friday. On the weekend of Jama'ah, where do people usually go to buy stuff? To the mall, right? Sometimes people go to these marketplaces not to buy anything. What do they go there for? Just kind of browsing and just kind of like chilling and seeing what's interesting in there. Maybe just to see people, see the wonders of the world. But by the time you're done with this marketplace and you go home, how do you feel? Exhausted. Even if you bought nothing. Why is that? Because you've seen so much that your hearts are aching that, oh, I wish I got this one. Oh, subhanAllah, that one that was a good bargain. You know what? I should go actually get that thing. You have all these thoughts in your mind that it stresses you out. In Al-Jannah is different. People don't go there to get stressed out. They go there for a purpose. The Prophet ﷺ says every Friday, people will gather in that marketplace, in that bazaar. He says that the northern wind will blow. Why did he say the northern wind in Jannah? In the Arabian Peninsula, the northern wind brings what? Cool breeze coming from Asham, from the north. If you're going to have the southern wind blowing, what's it going to get with it? Why are heat in Jannah? The western wind is going to bring what? Moisture, humidity. And the eastern, most likely, dust and sand. So the northern wind usually brings cool breeze. So the Prophet said the northern wind, similar to what they used to enjoy in this dunya, they will feel that breeze coming from the north. The Prophet says that wind will blow and shower fragments on their faces and clothes and consequently enhance their beauty and their loveliness. Like their charm and their beauty is enhanced multiple folds. Now they become more beautiful, they smell even better and better. Different from bazaars and markets of the dunya. You go to the markets of the dunya and you come back home, how do you smell? Query, barbecue, but al-jannah is different al jannah You go there, you come back, smell even nicer and you look even more beautiful. Then they return to their families, they return to their wives, who will also have increase in their beauty and their loveliness. So their family, their wives, they tell them when they come back, we swear by Allah that you have been increased in beauty and loveliness since leaving us. And they will tell them, and you too, we swear by Allah that you have also been increased in beauty and loveliness since we left you. What do you guys learn from this? How long are people going to live in Jannah, Jama'ah? Forever. And if that experience happens every single week, what does that mean? How far are your booty going to go, Jama'ah? What's the limit for it? Besides, what's the point of every week you look more beautiful? Because what happens here in this dunya, Jama'ah? When they want to look for marriage, for example, what do they look for? Someone beautiful, someone handsome, and then religious, right? But after you get married, the moment you marry this handsome guy or this beautiful lady, what happens after a few months, few weeks? Someone else more beautiful shows in the market, more handsome than they are, right? So there in Jannah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala given us always, always He gives you the first experience over and over again, over and over again, over and over again. That by the time you get used to their beauty, it doesn't decrease. What happens to it? It increases, even though we don't age, but increases so that nothing in Jannah is the same. Everything is changing to better and better and better. And you're going to waste all of this eternity for some miserable gain of this world, fighting for crumbs in this dunya, when you can have all of this in the akhirah. Unbelievable. Now, what is the significance of this marketplace? The ulama, they say, this marketplace usually is more like the lobby of Jannah. You know, because the Jannah is different category and different grades. Some of them live in tents, beautiful pearls. Others, they live in these twinkly stars all the way up there. You can even tell how far they are, subhanAllah. So different levels in Jannah. How do we meet with the prophets and the anbiya and the salihin? Because some of us might say, you know what? I know myself, I would barely be in Jannah, let alone to be in Firdaus al-A'la with the prophets. So how can I get there? Well, you can. You can see him, inshallah. But it's going to be in the marketplace. So every Friday, everybody comes to the lobby. Since with all these billions of people throughout the history of mankind, you're going to still be able to see the Prophet ﷺ. You can, and if you want to be a VIP person sitting next to him, then what do you need to work on? How can you bring yourself closer to the Prophet ﷺ? Husnul Khuluq. The first thing, the heaviest thing is your good manners. It doesn't matter how bad people to you. What matters is how good you are to them. What else? Take care of orphans. What else? Salah, frequently. Tahajjud, Nafil, Sunnah, Tahiyatul Masjid, Duha, Ishraq, as many as you can. Because the Prophet ﷺ, when he asked that young man, what shall I reward you with? He goes, I want to be closer to you in Jannah. And the Prophet says, can you ask for something else I can guarantee? He goes, no, that's what I want from you. Bring me close to you in Jannah. So the Prophet told him, help me get you there by praying more often. So you have a lot of opportunities to be there in the companionship of the Prophet ﷺ. Even if you're not in Al-Firdaus Al-A'la, you can still get a close seating near the Prophet ﷺ. May Allah make us in the closest company of the Prophet ﷺ.